Hello and welcome. A big challenge in getting an economy moving is bringing business and government together. One of the good examples of uh, seeing that happen is, of course, the country of Singapore. Uh, we have a very interesting guest with us, uh, Gopinath Pillai, who is the uh, chairman of Gateway District Park, uh, Distri Parks, a very well-known company in India, but he's also a prominent investor and a Singapore resident who's here to tell us about the Singapore story in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. So, uh, you know, you're going to be talking about, our, you know, the Singapore story, the Singapore theme, which we all know yes. uh, in many ways. Uh, I've read the Lee Kuan Yew uh, first edition, second edition, and, okay. and, and it's fascinating. What are your own experiences? Well, uh, Singapore, when it left Malaysia, was considered to be, likely to be a failure because it had no, uh, no resources, a very small population, it had a lot of strikes, it had student uh, agitation, and so nobody gave much of a chance. It was the leadership, the political leadership, that took it uh, tight control of the country and uh, instituted a number of measures that made it an uh, investor-friendly destination. Being part of that, you know, uh, was quite an experience for me. The country continues to evolve. Now, of course, uh, Singapore is known as a choice of uh, destination, uh, destination of choice, rather, of, uh, for investors. Um, but it still continues to grow because each day is a challenge for us. Anything that happens in any part of the world has an effect on us because we are very dependent on the global economy. So when Europe goes down, the United States goes down, it affects us very badly. Uh, China is coming up and we are a major player in China, but China does not replace Europe and America. So that's a challenge now we're facing. This year our growth is uh, projected to be about 1.2 percent, which is one of the lowest we've had. But uh, it's on a high base. So with a lower growth comes cer certain social problems. One of the uh, areas where uh, one of the contributors of our growth has been not only our liberal policy for foreign investment, but our liberal policy towards foreign talent and foreign workers. Now, with the downturn, with the economy growing uh, less robustly, people are questioning, why do we need so many foreigners? Are they coming to take our jobs? Are they coming to uh, sort of, you know, make, they're doing so well while we are not doing so well. So, such social issues come to the fore. We will have to tackle them. And uh, what has happened is, uh, I mentioned that the political leadership had a tight control. That is now being relaxed because the social media has become a major player. And uh, whatever control you may have uh, don't work anymore because the social media comes out with something. Uh, you know, a lot of it may not be quite correct information, but it is enough to agitate the people, you know. So what does this mean to you as a businessman? Uh, the Singapore, for me, Singapore was uh, a springboard for my investment into India. My investment in Singapore is not large. I'm, uh, my investment is in um, education and uh, we have schools. We are doing quite well in education. We do vocational training, uh, basically things like hospitality, accountancy, law and so on. So we have schools in Singapore, we have schools in Malaysia, we have schools in London, uh, in Dublin, in, uh, in Cyprus, and we are listed on the second board in London. So we are able to expand because Singapore provides a sort of an environment where if you go anywhere as a Singapore investor, there is certain degree of credibility. They know that you are used to a, a legal system which can be very harsh if you, you sail too close to the wind. So they, you, you gain the trust of the people because they know your own home country does not allow you to run wild. Right. So you're also uh, running Gateway District Parks. Yes. It's considered a hot uh, logistics uh, stock. 
Uh, how, how are things looking on that front? I mean, you know, considering that that too is dependent to a large extent on trade and yes. a, a robust economy. The Exim trade is the major driving force for our, our logistics. We have three verticals in, in logistics. One is the containers that we accept from the ship. We, we de-stuff them and then distribute the products. The second vertical is where we have a license to move containers by rail. And the third uh, vertical is we have probably the largest coal chain in India with 17 outlets. Each of this uh, provides a different service. And uh, I must say that uh, generally we have been very lucky. We have done well. In the container business, uh, we are one of the larger players. In the railway movement of containers, I think we are also fairly large. Concor, of course, is the largest in there, but uh, we are probably a far second. The distance is very large. In the cold chain, we are the largest. Yeah. So how would you, I mean, to come back, if I were to now merge the theme about, you know, governments and businesses working together, Singapore as a starting point or a springboard, as you said, and your own experience in India. So, uh, you know, India has, has seen slowing growth. What are the kind of areas that you think the government could focus on to help business along? I mean, or do sort of, uh, do this, better for business? <laughs> this is a sensitive question to a, an investor because you don't want to upset the government. One of the problems that foreign investors... But you are successful in a business which is quite linked to, let's say, government and government policy yes. and so on, yes. I mean, compared yes. to many others. And also, it's a tough business. Yeah. Every time I say I'm in logistics, people say, oh my God, you, yeah. you know, it's a troublesome one. It is true. Uh, what we look to government is some consistency in policy, transparency, and... Uh, we are not actually looking at sort of like in Singapore, the go government gives a lot of uh, incentives uh, for investors to come in. I you think mean, like tax incentives, tax incentives, cheaper land. Land is not a problem in land short Singapore. We are only 600 square kilometers. But an investor who has been approved by the government as an investor, you can get land anytime. In India, land is a problem, you know? So just to give you one example, government does not intervene and say, okay, give you the land. L not like in China. If the mayor likes your project, your land is assured. You can't have that in India. India has its challenges. But my own experience is it can be managed. You must have patience. You must have uh, ability to read the situation well. And uh, then... So you said consistency of policy. That's the key thing that you would... Uh, consistency of policy yeah. and transparency. Yeah. You know, uh, give you a small example, like uh, we got the railway license. But if you keep changing the haulage charges, for instance, then we are affected because you, you are projecting your, your revenue on a certain basis. But if you change the haulage charges, then our revenue goes down, you know. So we, we have problems, but uh, we, we manage. Right. So uh, a last word on where, where you think you would invest next, or what, what are the kind of areas that would interest you in India if you were to look ahead? You see, first people ask me whether I'm looking at other countries. No. India is large enough, and I think there are so many within the logistics. There's so much more we can do. So I don't have to go outside the logistics. I'm doing containers. I can do general warehousing. I'm doing cold chain. I can do processing. So these are things that I'm looking towards. I'm diversifying the type of products I put in my cold store. So would you acquire as well, therefore? There are not many to for acquire. acquisition. You see, you can we store vegetables, uh, what uh, poultry, ice cream. But now about 30% of our business is pharmaceuticals. Uh, another product that has come, films, you know, we store. So you can diversify. The, the opportunities are here. It's a question of having the patience, having the, <laughs> you know, the mindset that whatever it is, you will manage. Dr. Pillai, on that note, thank you so much for joining us. You're most welcome. <laughs>